Thanks for joining us on Tandem Radio for a very special segment by design, focused on helping you understand how God designed you so that you may be healthy and productive in fulfilling God's purposes in your life for many years to come. Now let's join our host, health expert and public speaker, Dr. James Prudian. Welcome to the By Design radio program. My name is Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare and PrudianHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity, and as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to educate you and your families to feel better, function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible. The way we do that at By Design is we roll up our sleeves, we strip away all of the nonsense, we get rid of the rag magazines at the checkout counter. We take all of the nonsense that's on TV of people trying to sell you stuff, and let's get into the truth of science, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, and all of those subjects that you know uh, us, us uh, kind of geeks like to study and and spend our lives uh, talking about. Because what what I do through Pretty in Healthcare, one of my companies is Wellness at Work, is provide education and been in and out of corporate America for many many years, providing very literal. Matter of fact, education about science driven initiatives that just get washed away with people trying to sell you stuff in magazines and on TV. So, we take a physical, a nutritional, and psychological perspective on everything we do at Peridian Healthcare. And we're right in the middle, smack dab in the middle. This is part three of stress management. This is a foundational subject matter, which means that there are eight or nine foundational programs that I'm going to be doing. This is the third. Uh, We did uh, detoxification and epigenetics already, so you could please go back to the archives and get caught up on those. Everything that I do is cumulative, which means that, you know, health is not just – is not single-dimensional. It's a multidimensional process. It is something that when we look at stress as we get through this program, uh, which is part three and part four, we're really going to see the web that exists in us that creates a stressful environment and our reaction to it. So Luke one thirty seven for with God, nothing is impossible, and we need to be passionate about that and understand that with God's help and with better education, we can make very proactive changes to our lives and the lives of our children to help us feel better, function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible. So if you've kept up, uh, show one was about fight or flight, the natural reflex that's built inside of us. That is our ability to, if a lion walked in the room, our body goes into this amazing reflex using adrenaline and the power of adrenaline for that momentary response of fight or flight. And we talked through the fact that fight or flight is not a reflex that we should be using day to day for daily energy, energy and daily mental capacity. It is preserved and reserved for this fight or flight reaction. A lion walks in the room, for instance, or I use the example of one of my children many years getting injured and rushing her to the hospital. That's fight or flight. Show two, we talked about anxiety, depression, and stress, and we literally defined each one of these words. And you could always email me. I'll be happy to send you my slides with respect to definitions so you could use them as references. We talked about in show two, we introduced the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland, which is a, uh, a gland that lays on top of your kidneys, you've got two of them, and the pituitary gland, which is in your brain, that sends out hormones and chemicals to tell other glands like your thyroid, like your adrenal, like organs like your liver that make cholesterol, which is a stress hormone – like your pancreas, which makes insulin, which we're going to get into, and this orchestra, this web of information that's being provided by the master, which is the uh, hypothalamus, which tells the pituitary gland what's to do, what to do, and these hormones have a feedback mechanism, which means your adrenal gland is constantly giving information back to your brain about its state of stress. And as we talked about the adrenal gland, we talked about adrenal fatigue. And what the adrenal gland, this adrenal-driven lifestyle, which so many Americans are wrapped up in, they never, ever stop. It's this constant state of physical, nutritional, psychological stress that's contributing to this chronic fatigue, this chronic inflammation, chronic infection, chronic pain, all the chronic diseases that we have. Every study is showing now that when you look at heart disease, the incidence of cancers, everything is growing in a stressful state. So we don't want to proliferate and allow chronic illness to grow inside of us. 
by allowing our bodies to be in this hyper reactive, stressful state. So much of it is coming through the adrenal-driven lifestyle. Now, a book that I could point you to is written by Hanley. And that book, um, uh, which outlines uh, this adrenal-driven lifestyle, um, basically looks at how we could combat adrenal fatigue, adrenal burnout, in a very sort of simplistic approach, it's written for patient and it's written for doctor. And if you'd like more information about, about that book, please contact me and I'll be happy to send you the link of Hanley, who's PhD, who, who wrote um, the, the book about this, this subject matter. There's numbers of books written about this, but I really like um, uh, Rescue, Repair, and Rejuvenate, uh, which is the outline of uh, adrenal fatigue. So as we look at the physical symptoms of adrenal fatigue and burnout, we're looking at the things we spoke about, muscle pain, joint pain, GI problems, craving for sweets, and our which lead to emotional and mental symptoms of adrenal fatigue and burnout, depression, reduced memory, anxiety, inability to cope, lack of concentration, fogginess, irritability. These things, this maladaption to chronic stress, our adrenal dysfunction leads to adrenal fatigue, which eventually leads to adrenal failure. We have sleep disturbances, suppressed immune system, muscle, bone, and skin breakdown, suppression of growth hormone, blood sugar dysregulation. All of a sudden, our blood sugar is above 100 on our fasting blood tests, where increased susceptibility to chronic illness and our GI system starts to create a problem. So when we disrupt this normal process of the adrenal fight-or-flight reflex and we're overusing this adrenal gland, which causes the thyroid gland also to begin to burn out. And I'm sure I'm speaking to many people who are taking Synthroid, for instance, and have thyroid or hypothyroidism. This is because these glands are just overworked. They're overworked. They're overburdened. And they're just stressed out. Out And over a period of time, this doesn't happen overnight, we create a variety of symptoms that um, our body is internalizing, disturbing the normal homeostasis, which means balance, and we end up with things such as the sleep disturbance, the blood sugar dysregulation, body aches, fatigue. And we go to the doctors and they're sticking Band-Aids and pills on these things when Not many people are looking at the cortisol output of the adrenal gland. And that cortisol, which is one of those hormones that is made in our bodies, as it elevates and it becomes more prevalent in our body, we're going to pack on body fat because it's a normal stress reaction by our body. Now, a few things we should really avoid to allow these adrenal glands to start to recover. Anger, hate, worry, pessimism. Overeating, overworking, poor or inadequate sleep, lack of exercise, stimulants like sugar, caffeine, and nicotine, junk food, neglecting relaxation, neglecting your prayer time, irregular sleep-wake cycles. Irregular sleep-wake cycle is a big one. Remember when you're in college, or maybe I just did this when I was in college. You know, you go to bed at two o'clock in the morning. You woke up at nine. You went to a few classes. You slept during the day. You, you didn't have a regular sleep-wake cycle. Go to bed around 9, 10 o'clock, wake up around 6 o'clock, whatever that might be. It's important that we get to bed before 11 o'clock, and it's important we get good quality REM sleep. Nothing is more important to allowing our adrenal glands to recover. They will not recover unless we get good solid sleep during the night and avoiding a lot of the things that I just mentioned. Because our brain activity while we sleep, this REM, REM stems for rapid eye movement, our brain activity goes into a different physiological pathway and allows our bodies to heal while we sleep. So if we have high cortisol levels while we're sleeping, that disrupts that that normal REM sleep. You might be sleeping, but you're not in the good quality REM sleep like you should be. So because of that, These high cortisol levels impact us while we're awake, and it also impact us while we sleep. The other thing cortisol does as it's being secreted by the adrenal gland in this very low low quantity, 
you know, again, it's not because there's a lion in the room, but it's because there's daily grind. It's causing our adrenal glands to be overworked. When we elevate cortisol, we're also increasing the incidence of osteoporosis because we're lowering our bone density. Cortisol is a hormone that has a downstream effect to the way our bone absorbs nutrients. So not just are we dealing with the excess of body fat, the uh, you know the fogginess, the irritability, the inability to concentrate, the inability to cope, but we're also dealing now with other physiological consequences like elevated blood sugar on our way to type 2 diabetes and osteoporosis. So this ongoing excessive cortisol output from the adrenal gland impairs muscle protein synthesis. It impairs collagen synthesis. It breaks us down. That's called cata- being in a catabolic state. We don't want to be in a catabolic state. We want to be in an anabolic state. Collagen breakdown is important because collagen makes up the connective tissue between our – that would makes up ligament and the, the lining of our – of our joints. And so that collagen, which makes up our skin also, that breakdown is enhanced by increased cortisol. The fat deposition around our waist and our pelvic region is promoted through this excessive cortisol. And if we look at today's modern medicine, how do we treat all of these things? Well, you think about thyroid, we give Synthroid, the adrenal stress, the liver, the pancreas, the brain, and also our hormones made by testicular and ovary, that's where we're going to leave. We're going to pick up there on part four of stress because we're going to get into all of these various body parts that are making hormones are all impacted by the stress load coming into the brain, impacting the thyroid, which impacts the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland kicks out this excessive cortisol, and then it targets all of these other organs. So this ongoing episode, year in and year out, is having a tremendous impact on people's lives. Well, thank you for listening to the show this week. You've listened to the By Design Radio program. Thank you for joining me, Dr. James Prudian. And I pray for you this week. Do something good for your health, your wellness, and get good quality sleep. Be well and God bless you. You've been listening to By Design with Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare. To learn more, visit us at tandemradio.com. That's tandemradio.com or on Facebook. And don't forget to email us with your questions. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, hope you have a healthy week and we look forward to you joining us next time for more fantastic insights from Dr. James Prudian on By Design, a special production of Tandem Radio.